is a very, very baby seed. I have had a little uh, hair growth going on. We want to thank you for your amazing grace. We love mountains. Valleys, not so much. It is I, Gain Girl. What's that spell? You kings. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. We're gonna shout, 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 shout in the river. What are we doing? In, are, do we have any idea what we're doing? We're gonna take a look at the weather. Maggie, are you are you barking? No one's better than Super. Hey everyone! Wow! It is we hope that y'all had fun. God wants to talk to you. He will always meet you wherever you are. I love you. It's a very, very baby seed. I have had a little uh, hair growth going on. We want to thank you for your amazing grace. We love mountains. Valleys, not so much. It is I, Gain Girl. What's that spell? You kings. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. What are we doing? In, are, do we have any idea what we're doing? We're gonna take a look at the weather. Maggie, are you are you barking? No one's better than Super. Hey everyone! Wow. It is we hope that y'all had fun. God wants to talk to you. He will always meet you wherever you are. I love you. It's a very, very baby seed. I have had a little uh, hair growth going on. We want to thank you for your amazing grace. We love mountains. Valleys, not so much. It is I, Game Girl. Ooh. What's that spell? You kings. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. What are we doing? In, are, do we have any idea what we're doing? We're gonna take a look at the weather. Maggie, are you are you barking? No one's better than Super. Hey everyone! Wow. It is we hope that y'all had fun. God wants to talk to you. He will always meet you wherever you are. I love you. There is one thing that you need to hear above everything else. Jesus died for you. Despite everything you have done in your entire life, God loved you so much that he was willing to send his only son down to the earth to live a perfect life and then die for you. What sort of crazy love is this? That a perfect God would give up his perfect son so that people like you and me could be redeemed. 
who paid the ransom for our sins, providing us a way of escape from eternal punishment. He offered us a chance at life and life to the full. He offered us freedom in Him. What did Jesus do? He did everything. I want you to fully understand what this means. I want you to comprehend the cost involved, the torment He suffered, and the separation from God He experienced. Once you understand what He really did, you begin to understand what you are worth to Him. You begin to understand that His love is unsurpassable. It is extravagant, glorious, perfect. You might say, I don't deserve His love. Nobody does. That's why it's a gift. Despite our messed up lives, we get to receive God's love by accepting His Son, Jesus Christ, as our Lord and Savior. A lot of people will tell you that there are many ways to be saved, but the truth is that salvation is only accomplished through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yes, He died, but then He also rose again so that you and I might be forgiven of our sins and made alive in Him. You want to find salvation? Find Jesus. You want to know what it's like to be set free? Know Jesus. This is the deciding moment. This is your chance to truly begin to seek God. If you're thinking, I've tried before and it just doesn't seem real to me. I feel like God is just an idea sitting out there in space and He really doesn't have a lot of effect on my life. Listen to me. If you have not experienced the life-changing power of God, chances are you have never made Jesus the Lord of your life. God is real. Jesus is real. And if you believe in Him, He will change your life. You won't be the same person anymore. You will be a new creation in Him. Romans 10.9 says that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved.
Good morning and welcome to Discover Livestream. Um, it's really nice to be uh, welcoming you and, and I'm so grateful for, to Julian to ask me to do it. I'm Graham Roberts, I'm the vicar of St Andrews and uh, I'm in an unusual location and maybe we can just uh, let you look round and see, let you see where we are. We're in the garden at the back of, of the church and I brought you here because I wanted to show you a couple of things. Here is a very, very baby seed. It's just a few days old and that's, uh, that first shoot is, is pressing out. This one is uh, a, little, a little while older, uh, probably about a four or five days. That's again a very gentle shoot and it's bursting out of its seed. This one here has been going for about uh, uh, two weeks and it's been a bit slow but it's coming out you see it's lead leaves and then I want to show you these that are coming up uh, these have been planted out about a, um, a week or so ago and uh, they've been having battles with slugs but actually are more or less unscathed and up they go um, on their way up their beam poles hopefully it's going to take quite a while they take seven to ten days to germinate and then 16 weeks to grow up before we can start harvesting the beans. And the verses I wanted to share with us are from James chapter five about patient endurance. Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, waiting patiently for the autumn and spring rains. You too be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. And these two things together, be patient and stand firm. We're, we're waiting for this lockdown to change. Some of us are, are longing to see family members that we haven't been able to see uh, for, for weeks. Some of us are waiting for jobs to start up. Some of us are waiting for churches to open and we're all uh, called to uh, have patient endurance waiting for these things but also pressing on planting watering being diligent in our prayer being diligent in all we all, all we're called to do from the Lord so that's just the word that I wanted to share with you uh, may God bless each one of you and may both of our churches have patient endurance as the times unfold. May God bless you. Hi everybody and welcome. Uh, as you see I have had a little uh, hair growth going on in the last couple of weeks so I finally felt confident enough to appear in front of you lovely people once again. Uh, keep praying for me, it's been quite a stressful time I can tell you that. Uh, lovely to be with you today, just briefly want to say uh, that uh, coming up in the service will be some worship time, obviously some ministry in the word, communion uh, and prayer time. A bit different in prayer time today, we're inviting you to place a prayer request within the chat that follows this live broadcast. So if you see all the comments that come up usually on the bottom of your screen, you can add a prayer request into there and then together we will pray through those things in our prayer time today. Uh, so we'd love to hear from you in that respect. Just want to flag as well that uh, every Wednesday at the moment we are broadcasting at half past seven, just a short devotional time in the Word of God uh, with Jeff Milan. So we take about 30 to 40 minutes with a couple of worship songs and some time in the Word. So uh, don't miss out on that. It's a, a great sort of punctuation mark in the middle of your week and we'd love to have you uh, with us. Uh, also with our worship time today, Hannah Roberts from St. Andrews has put together a worship collaboration using some of us guys from, from uh, the Downward family as well and some of their guys so um, uh, it's the first time she's done this and uh, so we're sure you're going to enjoy that but just enter into the worship today into the word of God and enjoy the service everyone and don't forget to contact us if you need anything during this week father we place the rest of this time into your hands we thank you Lord God for what is coming up that will feed us and nourish us will challenge us and build us up we thank you Lord for our families here as well the, the children who are present watching right now and through the children's time later on Lord we pray a blessing upon them uh, and we pray father as we spend this time together 
Father, in your presence right now, you will speak to us and that you will change us on the inside more and more into your likeness. We give you, uh, this time we give you our attention, Lord, through these moments. In Jesus' name, amen. Enjoy the service, everyone. It says to me, it tells me that I'm never ever alone. I'm learning how JSUS came down to us and gave his best. Without a doubt, the best friend you'll ever know. Our God knows exactly what I need. So I remember this. Let's go. When you ask, he cares. When you see, he's there. When you knock, 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 God opens up the door. When you ask, He cares. When you see, He's there. When you knock, 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 God opens up the door. Oh, oh. I'm reading my VIP early, and this is what it says to me. It tells me that I'm never, ever alone I'm learning how J-S-U-S Came down to us and gave his best Out of doubt, the best friend you'll ever know Our God knows exactly what I need So I remember this Let's go! When you ask, he cares When you see, he's there When you knock, knock when you ask, he cares When you see, he's there When you knock, 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 knock God opens up the door When you seek, he's there. When you knock, 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 God opens up the door. When you ask, he cares. When you seek, he's there. When you knock, 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 God opens up the door. Greetings everyone at Discover. Uh, as you can see, we managed to jet off just before lockdown started to our private island. Um, it has been hard, uh, I will admit, uh, but we are coping. Uh, how's it been for you, Max? Um, I've been enjoying swimming with some turtles and fish and sharks. Almost got eaten. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, we hope that you're all doing well wherever you're uh, in lockdown. And uh, it'll be great to see you all again soon. Uh, but from now, from all of us, aloha. And uh, we'll see you all soon. Hi. I miss you. Miss you, friends. Keep well, keep safe, keep loving God. Okay, a message now from our good friend, Eddie Perez. He wrote this this week. In these times of uncertainty and the life-threatening pandemic, which has spread so fast around the globe, we should keep our hearts and minds fixed on the Lord. I've chosen Ephesians 6, verse 10 to 20 for you today. The armor of God. Finally, 
Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you've done everything to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, keep up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Stay blessed, Eddie Perez. Thank you, my man. Uh, that's Discover Church, actually, guys. I'm Hannah. I'm Caitlin. I'm Lucy. And I'm Stephen. And we are Has Missions or the Prossers. We love you guys, and it's really great to be able to connect with you at this time. We've been thinking about you for some time and really praying um, that God will guide you in all things. And we hope that during this COVID time that you are well. Just a bit of an update on us. First of all, personal update and local update. So we were all quite ill just before the national lockdown. We think probably with COVID. Um, done some quite serious breathing issues and things but God has brought us through we're still a little weak still a little tired but we're now doing well also I've been helping in a local hospital to deliver uh, medicines between the different wards and uh, last week just done 21 ward visits so it's quite exciting to be connected I've been doing the food bank and it's just amazing how even in a lockdown situation as key workers we can connect with our communities we switched to a delivery model and we've been able to bless people and help people who've been struggling with food and keep our church strongly connected with its community. But of course it takes more than an international pandemic to hold back the work of HAS missions and the work we do with mentoring church leaders around the world. So what have we been doing during this time? Well, one of the things we're doing at the moment is we're organising the conference that was going to be in person in Czech Republic is now being run online. So we've been organising that and preparing and we're going to be working with some of the church planters and church leaders at the end of this month in the online conference. We've also been, spent the last weekend uh, on, a, on a call where we've done 10 hours learning about a Muslim discipleship course so that we're trained and equipped to be able to do that and we've been doing that with people from around the world. We've also been mentoring and we've connected with a lot of the AOG missionaries on Zoom calls as well from Luxembourg and Spain and Serbia and various other places across Europe to encourage them, to mentor them and, and just help them through the lockdown that they're experiencing as they try to connect with their people as well. And the same also with the church planters, the youth leaders, the church workers that we are part with, partnered with in a number of our connections too. Girls, what about you? Well, I've been learning the guitar and the piano. And recently I've um, been getting plenty of school from school. But I've also been uh, starting to help out of the food bank and all the work they're doing there. And finally, if you wonder why we're dressed up like this, the reason is that we've just done a video for Sunday School which we all had to dress up as slightly different characters so that's why we're dressed up in this way. We hope you enjoy it anyway. Okay, God bless you all! Later! Bye. Bye.
The storm was raging fiercely. John Newton had time to think. His life seemed as ruined and wrecked as the battered ship he was trying to steer through the storm. Since the age of 11, he had lived at sea. Sailors were not noted for their refinement of manners, but John Newton had a reputation for profanity, coarseness, and debauchery that even shocked most sailors. John Newton was known as the great blasphemer. He sank so low at one point that he was even servant to slaves in Africa. His mother had prayed he would become a minister and had taught him the scriptures before she died when he was seven years old. Some of his early childhood teachings came to him in the middle of the storm. John Newton had rejected his mother's teachings and had led many other sailors into unbelief. Certainly he was beyond hope and beyond saving. Yet Newton's thoughts began to turn to Christ. That day at the helm, the 21st of March, 1748, was a day Newton remembered forever as the Lord delivered him. Later he wrote, only God's amazing grace could and would take a rude, profane, slave-trading sailor and transform him into a child of God. Newton never ceased to stand in awe of God's work in his life. Such amazing grace. As we come to the table of the Lord this morning, we remember we were dead in our trespasses and sin, but God, because of his love, his mercy, and his grace, has made us alive in Christ Jesus through his death and resurrection. And so we take the bread this morning and we remember, Jesus, your body was broken for me. Let's partake together. Thank you, Jesus, for your broken body, your body that brings wholeness to us in every part of our lives. Thank you for what you've done for us on the cross of Calvary. You have made us alive. Thank you for your amazing grace. We take the cup and we share and we remember this cup represents the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for us. His life poured out so that we could be made alive in Christ Jesus. Let's take together. Lord Jesus, this morning, we want to thank you for your amazing grace that saved a wretch like me, like every one of us. And we thank you that you've cleansed us, you've redeemed us, you've forgiven us. You've made us anew and today we are alive in Christ Jesus. Thank you for your grace. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you, the Lord make his face shine upon you. Well, this weekend, we kick off a new series called Valleys. You know what? We love mountaintops. We love those moments that represent the high points in our lives. I remember a few years ago, I was driving through the Andes Mountains in Ecuador on a mission trip, and you couldn't see the top of the mountain because of cloud cover. 
And then we drove through the clouds and the clouds formed this celestial carpet and it felt like we were on top of the world. You could see for miles. We love mountains. Valleys, not so much. In fact, in the valley, it's hard to see two inches. It's hard to see tomorrow. I think the valley represents those low points in our lives. If you have walked through the valley of grief, if you have walked through the valley of waiting or the valley of disappointment, you wonder if you'll ever make it to the other side. You wonder if there is another side. And if you do make it to the other side of that loss of a loved one uh, or the loss of a job or even a crisis like this, what is that new normal going to be like? Here's what I know for sure. The valley is where we discover who we really are. And more importantly, it's where we discover who God is. The valley is where faith is forged. The valley is where vision is birthed. The valley is where character is cultivated in our lives. We have some lessons to learn in the valley. Let me zoom out and then I'll zoom back in. There is an interdisciplinary study called geopolitics, looks at politics through the filter of geography. And I'll give you a classic case in point. Uh, China and India, they're next door neighbors. Uh, Huge populations, very different politically and culturally. Why is it that over thousands of years uh, that there has been relative peace uh, between these two nations? Well, the answer is the highest mountain range in the world, uh, the Himalayas. Listen, politics is shaped more than we know by geography and uh, can you say gerrymandering? We'll leave it right there. Uh, In a similar sense, I think spirituality is shaped by geography more than we know. Why don't we call it geo-spirituality? Just made that up on the spot. But here's the bottom line. Geography and spirituality are intertwined in intricate ways throughout Scripture. There are a few different lenses through which we can view scripture. You can look through the lens of theology. You can look through the lens of history. Uh, You can look through the lens of biography or poetry or prophecy or even science. Uh, What I wanna do over the next couple of weeks is play the blue card in Trivial Pursuit. We're gonna look at it through the lens of geography. And so uh, over the next seven weeks, we will venture into uh, different valleys that are real places, real people, real events, and they happen in real time. So why don't you go ahead and grab your blunt stones. Open your all trails and uh, here we go. If you have a Bible, you can meet me in the Valley of Berica. You'll find it in 2 Chronicles 20. It starts out as the Valley of Crisis, but it turns into something very different and we'll get there. Uh, Let me get us situated biblically and chronologically. Second Chronicles was written about 430 BC, hundreds of years after the events that are recorded. Uh, begins with the reign of Solomon right around 970 BC. Uh, the kingdom is split around 930 BC. You've got the Northern Kingdom, Israel, Southern Kingdom, Judah. And for what it's worth, geography is actually a huge factor when it comes to idolatry. Judah uh, has Jerusalem. And so they have the temple. They, they stay centered around this place of worship. Israel uh, doesn't have that. And so they make some golden calves in Bethel and Dan. And uh, not an excuse for idolatry, but geography plays a part. Now, the chronicler traces the history of Israel, uh, these two kingdoms, all the way to 586 BC, the Babylonian captivity. And we're gonna zoom in on the fourth king of the southern kingdom. His name is Jehoshaphat. By the way, no quiz at the end of this, no spelling bee either. 
we pick up the story, 2 Chronicles 20, verse two. King Jehoshaphat is in the situation room. He is being briefed by the joint chiefs of staff and it is not a good report. It says, a vast army is coming against you. Moabites, Ammonites, Meunites uh, are uh, have marched all the way to En Gedi. So they're about 50 miles from Jerusalem. Uh, ancient army could, could march that in about three days. And I want you to remember that, three days. King Jehoshaphat finds himself in the valley of crisis. What do you do when a vast army is coming against you? What do you do when the things that you trust in in or taken away? What do you do when you feel like you're in a no-win situation? We'll answer those questions, but let me put this in present tense perspective. Uh, the COVID-19 virus, it feels like an invisible army, does it not? Uh, more than 2 million people infected worldwide, about 150,000 fatalities. May not be as scary as an actual army, but maybe more deadly. I, I think if you rewind 100 years, there's a case in point. Um, combat casualties in World War I numbered about 10 million. Uh, the Spanish flu that we've heard so much about in recent weeks killed about 50 million people. And so we find ourselves in a valley of crisis, not unlike King Jehoshaphat. The question is, what do we do? Well, I wanna unpack a couple of best practices and we'll get as far as we can go in about 25 minutes. I think it's in situations like this that you go back to basics. And so two things. One, I think you've got to pray your way through the valley. And two, I think you've got to worship your way out of the valley. I'll say this up front. So many subplots in this story. Don't have time to drill down on all of them. So here's what I want to do. I want to try something a little bit different. Sunday night, uh, seven o'clock Eastern time. Uh, I'm going to do an Instagram live at Mark Batterson, and uh, I want to get a little bit more backstory, uh, maybe share a few more principles from this passage, and uh, we'll hang out together uh, Sunday night, seven o'clock, Instagram live. Here we go, verse three. Jehoshaphat feared. <laughs> Let me just say this. Normal, natural. If a situation doesn't scare you like, like this, listen, then you are not human. I don't think there's, there needs to be any apology for fear in situations like this, but you can't let fear dictate your decisions. I think faith is the process of unlearning Fear. Now we're only born with two fears, fear of falling, fear of loud noises. Every other fear, every other fear is learned, which means every other fear can be unlearned. Well, how does that happen? First John 4, 18, perfect love casts out all fear. I pray that you would have a revelation of God's love because when we understand God's love for us, the net result, fearlessness. When you fear God, you don't have to fear anything else. Let's dig a little bit deeper. I'll give you two translations. The Amplified Version, which I'm reading through this year, uh, says this, Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord. How? Well, by prayer and by fasting. Can I just remind us, we are not a people who panic. We are a people who pray. On Easter, we kicked off a 40-day prayer challenge. And uh, if you missed it, it's too late. Uh, or it's not too late. Uh, day six, day seven, day 17. Listen, better late than never. Uh, our online host will put up that link, ncc.re slash pray. Um, can I encourage you to jump in on that prayer challenge. We're kneeling at 7.14 a.m. every morning. Why? Uh, we're kneeling on a promise. Second Chronicles 7.14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. We're going to pray like it depends on God. 
Prayer is not our last resort. Prayer is our first response. And I think this reaction of King Jehoshaphat is revealing. Um, You tell me, in a crisis situation, isn't it telling how someone responds? Uh, You know what I've learned? It's a lot easier to act like a Christian than it is to react like a Christian. What I love is that there's this instinct to seek the Lord, to pray and to fast. Now, second translation says it this way. Uh, Alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord. I, I, I like the word alarm because it's a double entendre. Uh, Yes, it means anxious awareness of danger, but it's also a device used to wake us up. I think God is shaking us up. I think God is waking us up right now. Now listen, this could be a game changer. This might be your application today. What if we took fear or jealousy or anger or you fill in the blank with any other emotion. What if we took that emotion and we used it as a trigger for prayer? What if we used it as an alarm for prayer? I mean, isn't that what the apostle Paul said? Uh, Do not be anxious for anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Here's all all I know. If I feel jealousy towards someone, the only thing that will cure it is me praying for them. If I feel anger towards someone, gotta pray for them. If I feel anxious about a situation, I've gotta pray into it until the peace of God begins to guard my heart and my mind. How do you do that? You pray your way through the valley. I'm praying that God would take our prayer lives to an entirely different level as we're in this season of crisis. Now, I think we need to do the same thing with the news. You can't just watch the news or it's a little bit depressing. Now, I love what the Swiss theologian Karl Barr said. Uh, Take your Bible and take your newspaper and read both, but interpret newspapers from your Bible. I think we get this backwards. I think we often filter the Bible through the newspaper and and I'll tell you what happens. Then our theology conforms to our reality. We live down to the circumstances around us. Uh, We've got to filter scripture, filter the news through scripture. And when we do that, our reality begins to conform to our theology. Let me give a little bit of cultural context. You know, they inquired of the Lord a little differently 3,000 years ago. Uh, Yes, they prayed. Yes, they sought wise counsel. Uh, They they had prophets that would speak into situations, Um, but they also cast lots. Okay, this is like eeny, meeny, miny, mo, and they cast lots all the way into the book of Acts. In fact, you see it when they're replacing Judas. Um, The lot falls to Matthias. You gotta feel a little bit bad for Joseph called Barsabbas who, who lost the coin flip. He exits scripture, but I may share a little bit of his story on that Instagram live. Long story short, we stopped casting lots when the Holy Spirit came on the scene. Well, why? Because now we have the counselor who confirms and convicts and reveals. And so you even see at the Council of Jerusalem in Acts 15, they, they don't roll dice when they have to make a difficult decision. No, they come to a decision and they say, it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us. And so we've got to learn to discern that still small voice of the Holy Spirit. Don't have time to drill down on this. Wrote a book called Whisper about seven languages that God speaks in. First language 
is scripture. We've got to filter everything through scripture. But then, listen, there are people and promptings and pain. There are desires and doors and dreams. And so we've got to learn to inquire of the Lord when we find ourselves in a valley of crisis. Now, let me say this, prayer. It's not about outlining our agenda to God. It's about getting into God's word, getting into God's presence and letting God outline his agenda to us. Listen, twofold litmus test. Gotta be in the will of God and for the glory of God. My, my prayer batting average, I don't think is any better than anybody else's. Oftentimes I ask for the wrong thing. I think someday we'll thank God for the prayers he didn't answer as much as the ones that he did. Prayer is less about changing our circumstances and more about changing us. I think sometimes we ask God to change the circumstances that God is using to change us. So I wanna make a careful distinction. Don't pray away, pray through. But what do I mean? Well, I, I think God could have kept Joseph out of jail. God could have kept Daniel out of the lion's den, could have kept Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego out of the fiery furnace, could have kept Benaiah out of a pit with a lion on a snowy day, could have kept Peter out of prison, could have kept John out of exile on the island of Patmos. But if he does that, guess what? Some of these miracles do not happen. I think all of us want a miracle. We just don't want to be in a situation that necessitates one, but you can't have one without the other. We've got to walk through this valley of crisis and we've got to learn the lessons that God is trying to teach us. Now, I love what Jehoshaphat does. He begins to declare who God is. This is so critical in seasons like this. You've got to remind yourself of who God is. Uh, you've got to stop talking to God about your problems, start talking to your problems about God. Here's what he says. Are you not God in heaven? In other words, God, you are still on the throne. God still reigns. In your hand are power and might. He says, no one can stand against you. If God is for us, who can be against us? Uh, he says, did you not drive out our enemies. You did it before, you can do it again. He says, did you not give us this land for others, for, for uh, forever? He is the way maker, the miracle worker, the promise keeper. God is watching over his word to perform it. He says, we built a sanctuary to honor your name. It's all from you. It's all for you. And then he says, your name is in this house. We've got to remember who God is. He is wonderful, counselor, mighty God, prince of peace. He is alpha and omega, the ancient of days, the rock of ages, a strong tower, a hiding place. And you can shelter under his wings. We find our identity in his name. Prayer is reminding us of who God is. Now, I love verse 12. Are you ready for this? It's double underlined in my Bible. It says, we do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Don't you love this? Listen, none of us has a crystal ball. We, we don't know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. We don't know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. Verse 15, do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army for the battle is not yours, but God's. Prayer is the difference between us fighting for God and God fighting for us. God's got this. God has your back. I believe that. We wanna do amazing things for God. That's not our job. Our job is to consecrate ourselves. And if we do our job, God's gonna do his job. He's gonna do amazing things for us. I think prayer is the way that we continue to play offense spiritually. I think prayer is the way that we wage war spiritually. We fight our battles on our knees. Verse 16, God tells King Jehoshaphat to march into the valley of Barakah. I am thinking twice about this. Listen, if you ever had God uh, 
prompt you to do something that you aren't so sure about it. Um, this reminds me of one of my favorite moments in, in American history. Uh, Joshua Chamberlain, July 2nd, 1863. Uh, his 300 soldier regiment is all that stood before the, between the Confederates and certain defeat of the Union Army at a battlefield in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. You may know the story. The Confederates charged five times. Chamberlain got hit by a bullet in his belt buckle, but gets back up. Uh, only 80 men are left standing. They have one round of ammunition, no reinforcements on the way. What do you do in a situation like that? You surrender, right? Wrong. Chamberlain uh, stands up and yells, charge. It turns the tide of the Civil War, ranks as one of the most improbable victories in military history as 80 Union soldiers capture 4,000 Confederates in five minutes flat. Now, Chamberlain would go on to serve as the governor of Maine, president of Bowdoin College, awarded the Medal of Honor by President Grover Cleveland. He said this, I had the deep, I had deep within me the inability to do nothing. I knew that I may die, but I also knew that I would not die with a bullet in my back. We are here for such a time as this. We are here for such a place as this. I know we can't gather physically. Seems like a setback. No, no. God is advancing his kingdom. His kingdom's gonna come. His will is going to be done. I say charge, why? Because the battle belongs to the Lord. We pray our way through the valley and we worship our way out of it. Now, let me say this, Friday, April 24th, so excited. We're gonna broadcast the Jesus Way live album recording that we did several weeks ago. I just think, uh, listen, we could use an hour of worship right now and so excited to gather together and worship Friday night and uh, we'll share a little bit more information with you. Uh, let me try to get us out of this valley. The Lord says, stand still and you will see the deliverance of the Lord who is with you. Jehoshaphat falls flat on his face, uh, all out intercession, and it says he worshiped God. Then he does something interesting, verse 21. The king appointed singers to walk ahead of the army, singing to the Lord and praising him for his holy splendor. This is what they sang, give thanks to the Lord, his faithful love endures forever. Are you kidding me? Like, this is crazy. I'm gonna send a guy with shields. I'm gonna send the guys with swords. Um, Jehoshaphat says, let's send the Sopranos. Like, what kind of battle plan is this? I wanna tell you something. If you're in the valley of grief, in the valley of pain, in the valley, valley of suffering, the way out of that valley is worship. You have to give God the sacrifice of praise. The hardest praise is the highest praise. I've been there. I've been at the graveside and I've sunk. It is well with my soul. I've been in the valley of dry bones and I've learned to sing simple songs in those seasons. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Not sure what valley you're in this weekend, but I want you to know that Jesus wants to help get you through it. He said, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you Rest. If that's you this weekend, if you're at our online campus, listen, would you just raise your hand right now? We want to pray for you. We want to send some follow-up to you to help you take that next step spiritually. We are in your corner and uh, we want to help you take that step. I want to invite our worship team to come as we prepare to worship God uh, with a song that I absolutely love. But let me get where this is going. King Jehoshaphat and his men went out to gather the plunder. Verse 25, they found vast amounts of equipment, clothing, and other valuables, more than they could carry. There was so much plunder that it took them, how long? Three days. Three days just to collect it all. Thought they had three days. 
on the clock. No, took them three days. Listen, what the enemy intends for evil, God can turn for good. Verse 26, on the fourth day, they assembled in the valley of Barakah where they praised the Lord. This is why it is called the valley of Barakah to this day. Can I tell you what it means in Hebrew? It means blessing. And so God turns the valley of crisis into the valley of blessing. This is who God is. This is what God does. Doesn't mean there won't be pain and suffering. Doesn't mean that we won't grieve, but we don't grieve as those who have no hope. I want you to know that his rod and his staff will comfort you, that he is preparing a table for you in the presence of your enemies, that he has uh, the oil of joy and that his goodness and mercy are following you all the days of your lives. He is the God who makes sidewalks through the sea. He is a God who makes a way where there is no way. He's the God who gives beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. In Jesus' name, amen.
Thank you for being with us this weekend. And uh, I want to share a benediction out of the book of Jude. I love this so much. I just want to speak it over your life. Then our team is going to lead us in one more song. Now to him who is able to keep you uh, without stumbling or slipping or falling and to present you blameless and faultless before the presence of his glory in triumphant joy and exaltation to the one and only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory and majesty and might and dominion and power and authority before all time and now and forevermore. Amen.
nothing reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I found leaves and ninety nine. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Wasn't that a great time in God's presence? Hope you enjoyed that as much as we did and really received something, especially from the Word. Let me just reinforce that point from Pastor Mark that we praise and worship our way through this coming week. Uh, let that be our response. It's not always an easy one, uh, but it can be done. And great power is seen, released, when we praise and worship our God through even the most difficult times. Uh, God bless you. Great to have you today. Children, don't go anywhere. It's your kids' time coming up next. And of course, anybody who wishes to can uh, stay along and watch that with us and enjoy it too. Uh, God, I thank you for this day that we've uh, got today with our families or just relaxing or worshipping you and blessing you. Father, we thank you for this time we've had in your presence. We pray that as we go through this week, we will not let go of your word, let go of the spirit uh, that is inside of us as you've deposited something in us. We bless you ahead of time for every good thing that you're going to do in our lives uh, this coming week. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you, everyone. See you soon. good. I'll give you that much. But I know that you can do it better. I know you can do it better. So I want you to say it with some conviction, with some oomph, all right? Give me a J. Give me an E. Give me an L. Give me a U. Give me an S.
Hi kids, how are you all doing? Guys, we miss you, we wish that you were here with us right now or we were there with you, I'm not sure which it is, although it would be a bit of a madhouse, but hey, hope that in your world, your parents are doing fine. I don't really care about you guys, because frankly, you just got loads of fun you can have and loads of toys to play with and games machines and TV, and thank goodness you got no schoolwork. But your parents might be going mental because you're at home constantly and driving them up a wall. So pray for them, won't you? Anyway, let's go into our kids' program right now. We're going to have a great time today. Open up your ears and your heart, and let's have a fantastic time in God's presence. Are you ready? You guys at home, are you ready? Did you hear them? I didn't hear anything. I didn't hear anything. I can hear something. I didn't hear anyone. One more time. This is the last attempt. Are you ready at home? A bit better. Okay, we'll, we'll go for it unless you can give me one last 100. yes or one last yaho or one last yahoo or one last whatever. Here we go. 40. Everyone ready at home? Better. Better. Let's go for it. Have a good time, guys. Hello, citizens. It is I, Game Girl. Oh. Oh, man, okay, I have been fighting off these balloons all day, but I am a superhero, ah! Okay, it's fine, guys, I got this. I've got superpowers! Oh my goodness, okay, ah, no, ah! There's too many of them! There's too many! Ah, no! Ah, ah! Okay, clearly I need to keep practicing, but, you know, practice makes perfect. Today, we're gonna be discovering one of our superpowers. Maybe it'll be super strength or super speed. Whatever it is, I know that it's gonna be awesome. I can't wait to discover this superpower with you all. So let's get started with a super game. This game is called Emoji Challenge. Here's how you play. When I say go, you'll see different hand emojis on the screen. All you have to do is make your hand match what you see on the screen. Let's do a practice round. I'll do it with you this time. Whatever shows up on the screen, you gotta match it. Ready? Practice round, get ready, set, go. You got it. Okay, get those hands ready. This one is all you. Here we go with round one in three, two, one, go. Did you get them all? Okay, I think you're ready for round two. This one is gonna be a little faster. You gotta get ready. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. You guys are getting good at this. Let's try another round. This round is going to have face emojis too. So get ready. Three, two, one. One, go! Great job! I think you're ready for pro level. This is our super bonus round. This is going to be crazy fast, so shake out those hands, stretch those faces, get them loose. Okay, ready? Here we go. In three, two, one, go! Super job! Give me a high five! Let's take a look at our memory verse. Hey everyone! God's Word is so powerful. Our memory verse is found in Ephesians 6.10. It says, Be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Ephesians 6.10. Let's all say that together. Repeat after me. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Ephesians 6.10. Great job. Let's say it one more time in slow-mo. Oh, that'll take too long. Slow motion. Ready? One, two, three. Be strong in the Lord and in his 
mighty power. Ephesians 6.10 Awesome job! You guys were so slow. That was amazing. I'll see you guys later. You guys did awesome! Okay, now my superhero friends, go ahead and stand up on your feet. Let's declare God's word over our lives because God's word is powerful. Show me your super muscles. Oh yeah, that was great. I think you're ready. Let's declare this super loud. Here we go in one, two, three, four. It is so awesome to declare God's word over our lives. Now, stay standing with me. Let's get ready for worship.
over fears I held You have spoken over suffering Over past regret Over sin's disease You have spoken All these things will fall Gone once and for all You said it is finished Death has lost its sting I'm forgiven Your blood my victory Now forever I will stand and sing Hallelujah It is finished As I fail Go to the newsroom and see how kids around the world have been using their superpowers. Good day to you, and welcome to this week's edition of Kids Super Good News, where once again every week we're going to be taking the opportunity to look at the ways that you have been using your newfound superpowers to influence and uplift those around you. Today we're going to take a special look at the newfound superpower of serving. But before we get to the main story, we're going to take a look at the weather. We're going to hand it over to Megan Merriweather, who I believe has something special planned for us this week. Megan? Hello, friends. I am here to give you a fun weather demonstration on how to have fun in any weather circumstance. And today I want to talk about how I have fun in the windy weather, and I like to fly a cat. Today I'm going to 
going to give you a nice demonstration. was a little bit more wind than you were planning on from the looks of it, but great job flying that kite. Next, we're going to get into one of my favorite segments. We're going to go out onto the farm with Maggie McDonald. I don't really know what she has for us today, but I can tell you that it's going to be fun. Maggie? Hi, I'm back. It's Maggie McDonald, and today we're going to talk to you some chicken. Oh. <laughs> He's a big one. Careful, Maggie. That chicken doesn't know what you're saying, just like we don't. Um, Maggie, are you? Maggie, are you are you barking? Maggie, I think you're barking. Well, Matt, that's chicken. Okay, <laughs> that is an interesting sound for what a chicken would make, but thank you for that, Maggie. And now, let's get to the main story, you kids. This is Israel, Alexia, Alicia, and Elena. And here we also have Kate. They're using their superpowers of words and serving by making cards for their local hospital staff. Next, we have Wonder Woman, all the way from Ireland, dressed in her superhero suit and watching the service. Here are Kezia and Maggie using their superpowers of service to help clean up around the house. And finally, we have Sebastian using his superpower of serving to make his mom breakfast. Okay, my kids, today um, my superpower is serving, so I'm gonna, so what I'm doing is I'm gonna make breakfast for my mom. So I'm cracking two eggs. Wait, let me see. One. And I'm cracking two eggs. Mom. So that's how, so that was amazing, yeah, my kids. Well done, Sebastian. Cracking eggs is no easy task. And remember, kids, make sure you have your parents' permission before using the stove. Well, that's all for today. Remember to continue to use your newfound superpowers of words, obedience, and serving throughout the week. Until next time, so long. Hey everyone, I'm super glad that you guys joined us for church today. Have you guys seen my friend Super Dave? He said he was gonna be here, but you know, maybe he's not. Oh, I know what it is. He says I have to sing the theme song for him to come. Super Dave, Super Dave, no one's but oh hey Super, oh. With heart. With heart, but. Super Dave, Super Dave, no one's better than Super Hey everyone. Wow, oh, you scared me. Okay, what's up Super Dave? You scared me again. I just heard you were talking about superpowers, so I wanted to come by and help. I've been practicing my superpower of flying. Wait, 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 wait whoa, you can fly? Oh yeah, flying is easy. Landing well, that's for next week. Oh well, I'm sure you'll get it. <laughs> but you're right about one thing. We're learning about a superpower that we all have today. Oh, oh, I can help. Which superpower are we talking about today? Super speed? No, it's actually- Laser eyes. Those are great for making popcorn. Yum. Wait, no, no, that, that's not what I, I was thinking. Boo-boo kissing powers? Boo-boo kissing powers, what is that? Oh, it's a very, very important superpower. My mom has it. Every time I get hurt when I crash land, my mom kisses my boo-boo and it's instantly healed. Do any of your family members have that superpower? Well, uh, that is a good superpower. I like that one, but it's not the one we're talking about today. Do you guys have any guesses? What do you think our superpower today is going to be? All right, well, let's see if you're right. 
Drum roll, please. I said drum roll, please. Oh, kids, help me give a drum roll. Okay, 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 thank you, Super Dave, that was awesome. And today, we're talking about the superpower of prayer. Whoa, prayer is a superpower? It is. It's one of the most powerful superpowers ever, too. So powerful that it kept a guy from being eaten by lions. Lions? Who? Was it you? No, that wasn't me. That was it. Was it them? Are you guys okay? Stay calm. Animal control is on the way. Whoa, Super Dave, calm down. Calm down, Mr. Rob. Okay, we're calm. It's not them, it's not us. It was a guy named Daniel from the Bible. Oh, kids, you're safe for now. You're welcome. Let's check out the story of Daniel and see how he used the superpower of prayer. Now, at that time, the story takes place, Daniel was one of the king's officials. Daniel had gained favor with the king, and he was one of the king's top leaders. Wow, so he was a really important guy. Yep, so much that the king was planning on putting Daniel in charge of the whole kingdom. Whoa, that's a big deal. Kids, can you imagine being put in charge of the whole kingdom? You could pass rules that says everyone has to have dessert before dinner. And no more Brussels sprouts ever! Dessert before dinner? I I'm, I'm not sure that... My kingdom, my rules, dessert for all. Let them eat cake! Okay, anyway, wow, okay, Super Dave. Let's continue with the story. So Daniel was a good man, trustworthy, and always did the right thing. But the other leaders were jealous of Daniel and the favor that he had from the king. So they came up with a plan to get rid of Daniel. What? Not cool. No dessert for them. Yeah, definitely not cool. You see, they knew that Daniel did something every single day, and every day he would pray three times to God. Oh, 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 that's the superpower we're talking about today, the superpower of prayer. Daniel used that too? Yeah, yeah, he did. He took that time to talk to God every day. So the other leaders convinced the king to pass a law saying that everyone should pray to the king, and if they didn't pray to the king and they prayed to God, they would be thrown into the lion's den. <gasps> so what happened next? Did Daniel have to stop praying? Not exactly. Daniel found out that the king passed the law, but he still got down on his knees and prayed to God. Wow, Daniel was so brave. Yeah, he really, really was. Now the leader who tricked the king into passing the law found Daniel praying, and it was ordered that Daniel should be thrown into the lion's den. What? I don't get it. What about the king? I thought he liked Daniel. Couldn't he stop it? Well, see, he tried, but the law was already passed. The king was sad, but there was nothing he could do. So that evening, Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. <gasps> what? They actually threw him in? I can't stand it. What happened? Well, the Bible tells us exactly what happened the next morning. In Daniel chapter 6, the king got up and he ran to the lion's den. <gasps> Okay, and he called out to Daniel in a panic. Daniel, did your God save you from the lions? Tell me now I can't stand it, Daniel, are you okay? Daniel responded, hey, your majesty, God sent his angels to shut the mouths of the lions. They haven't hurt me at all. Woo, oh, I feel so much better now. That's so cool. God sent his angel to shut the mouth of the lions so they couldn't eat Daniel. Ha, not today, lions, not today. No Daniel snack for you. You know, Mr. Rob, I want to be able to use my superpower of prayer like Daniel did too. But I'm not really sure how to do that. Well, Super Dave, prayer is simply just talking to God. It's telling him what's in your heart and your thoughts. It's actually like a conversation and God has promised to always hear us and to respond to us. He wants to talk to us. Prayer is powerful and is really awesome. It's an amazing superpower that we all have. Wow, I think I'm gonna use my superpower of prayer right now. There's so many things I wanna to talk to God about. I'll see you later, Mr. Rob. Bye, Super Dave. I'm sure that God's excited to talk to you too. You know what, guys? I have an idea that will show us just how powerful prayer can be. Let's go to the science lab. So what happens when we pray? Well, I've got this beaker right here and this is gonna represent God. Everyone say God. Awesome, and this balloon right here is gonna represent us. Say us. Good, you got it, okay. Now this baking soda is going to represent things that we go through in our lives that 
we kind of carry around with us. Maybe our parents are not getting along. Or maybe we're scared because someone that we love is, is sick right now. Maybe we're not getting along with our brothers or sisters, or it could be anything that you're having a hard time with. Eventually, you're getting full of all these problems. And carrying all this around can really weigh us down. Can this balloon float or do anything with all the stuff inside of us? No, it can't. It's the same thing with us. When we have all these things that we're carrying on our own, it weighs us down. It makes us weak. But you want to know something really awesome? This is why God gives us the superpower of prayer. We can take all of these things, all these problems, all these things that are weighing us down, and we can pray, okay? So I'm going to give all these problems and things to God. So when we hand everything over to God, when I pray and say, Dear God, I'm just really worried about my friend. God, I'm worried about getting sick. I'm worried about all these problems that I'm having. God, I just don't know what to do. When we give all these things to God, He in turn fills us with His strength. Our superpower of prayer is so awesome. And guys, you have the superpower of prayer too. God wants you to talk with Him and He wants to respond to you. You can at any time, anywhere, God wants to talk to you. He will always meet you wherever you are. Prayer is simply talking to God. It's something that we can all do. Would you guys actually pray with me right now? Let's start using the superpower of prayer together right now. Would you just pray with me? Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you that you've given me the superpower of prayer. Thank you that I can talk to you whenever and wherever I want. Help me to use my superpower of prayer every day, just like Daniel did. In Jesus' name, amen. It was so great getting to learn about the superpower of prayer with you. And guys, we have a challenge for you. We want you to get a piece of paper today and write down three or more things that you can pray for this week. You can even draw some fun pictures on it if you want. Keep that piece of paper by your bed so you remember to use your superpower of prayer every day. Take a pic of you and your prayer list and tag Gateway Kids on social media so we can join you in prayer too. We love you guys. Have a super awesome week. Super Dave, Super Dave. No one's better than Super Dave. Super Dave, Super Dave. No one's better than Super Dave. I don't know, am I, am I center? Oh yeah, perfect. Oh, that's so much better. My head's in the way. I want you to curl your back in an unnatural form. I heard, sorry. Wee! He was flying. Well, no, the first time. This is like a bad time, but I have to be. <laughs> oh man, I'm gonna have to sing a scene. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Here we go. I've been practicing. And this superpower that, well, I'm sure, whoop. Well, I'm sure you'll get it. But right now, about one thing, sorry. But you're right about one thing. We're learning today about a superpower. Why can't I read this? Well, I'm sure you'll get Well, I'm sure you'll get it. But right now, well, I'm sure you'll get it. Well, I'm sure you'll get it. Oh, oh, I can help. What's super five? Do any of your families have that super? <laughs> Guys. That was awesome. That was animal control. We, somebody call animal control, please. Quick, hurry. Wait, oh, that was I'm you? I'm so sorry. Sorry, like, I'm looking at the dots and I'm like. I just realized that there was gonna be a line. <laughs> that was funny. Right? It's not them either, it's a guy. Just... <laughs> Never mind. Burping. And the king were planning to put. Yep, so much. Yep, yes, he really was. Now, yes, he really was. Did the lion. Mm. Ha! No, not today, lion. <laughs> Your majesty. God sent his angel to shut the mouths of the lions. They haven't hurt me at all. For those of you who don't know, uh, my name is Vlad. Would it... I need the puppet. Hold on, hold on. It's true. <laughs> Today is the day 
Yeah, they're returning to motherland. Uh, the before the last that we must be in our compound. Biden. With the best wishes, I say goodbye. And you will absolutely have what you ask for. Golly. Look forward to have you here. Bye, Daniel. Ciao. Bye. <laughs> I'll see you in the gulag. Now this big... So, can this balloon float or do anything? <laughs> Greetings everyone at Discover. Uh, how's it been for you, Max? Um, I've been enjoying swimming with some turtles and fish and sharks. Almost got eaten. And uh, it'll be great to see you all again soon. Uh, but from now, from all of us, aloha. Mm -hmm. I miss you. Miss you, friends. Keep well. <laughs> what Great supine um, protoplasmic invertebrate jellies. What's up everybody? Welcome back to week four of Fifth and Six Online. Today is going to be so much fun. We've already had so much fun yeah. every week, right? It's been a lot of fun, people. Yeah, well, I am Izzy. This is... Hector. And this is... My name is Megan and Micah. <laughs> Today's episode is called The Absolute Truth. Mm. And do y'all know the absolute truth? Um, I'll tell you the absolute truth. We don't know what we're about to do next. Yeah, here's, here's we, the, don't here's, here, here's, we don't know. Here's the truth. I'm terrified. Look at me, look at me. I hate spiders. Look at me. Look at me. Spiders. I don't know. I'm what are we doing? Are, do we have any idea of what we're doing? No idea. No. We, we could be skydiving or something. We could be eating weird stuff that tastes bad. <gasps> no. We could be doing so many things. But we are so excited that we get to share this truth with you because it's the absolute truth. We don't know what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So y'all stay yeah. tuned and hopefully you'll have some fun with us. I'm nervous. So check this out. Let's, 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 let's prep. Just in case. Thank you so I'm much. Guerrero, if you're out there, I love you. But it's over. Andale, let's go.
deliberation, and after much bull riding, the winner is. Let's get you like six seconds. It's Izzy! Good job. I'm a little sad. Fun fact: um, this bull is actually my pet. Nice. I knew. Very nice. I knew. I knew. It, was nice. it was an inside job. Yeah. Where'd you guys hire these guys from? Guys. We hope that y'all had fun. Yeah. We don't know if we had fun. I'm still not sure. Mama Bear is on the line. Your boy is still a terrified, okay? Oh, but don't, don't. No, she's actually no. called Mom, Mom I love you. I'm clicking. Uh -huh. So here's the thing, guys. Get your notebooks out, your pamphlets, your journals, your number two pencils, whatever you got to do. We're going to be taking notes because note takers are history makers. makers. Now we're talking, people. Let's go to the message right now. I kind of sang that. I sung it. That was good. What's up, fifth and sixth graders? Welcome to the final week of the investigation. We've been going through an investigation together, talking about whether God is good or evil, whether the world's lying or telling the truth, whether the enemy's lying or telling the truth. Last week, we looked at the things that we need to be aware of. Everyone's a suspect, even ourselves, and we need to bring those things in darkness to the light. We wanna be like King David, not King Saul. And today, we finish the investigation and we're talking about the evidence. Every good investigation is all about the evidence. It's all about following the facts. The amazing thing about facts is it doesn't matter what our feelings are. It doesn't matter what our opinions are. The facts are the foundation. The facts remain the same. For example, I have opinions. You have opinions. My opinion is sugar cookies aren't real cookies. Now, I'm not saying that's the truth. That's just my opinion because a sugar cookie is a bear cookie. It's an unfinished cookie. Don't come at me with a sugar cookie unless we're gonna sprinkle some chocolate chips on there, put a Reese's peanut butter cup. Something in it has to be added for it to be a cookie, in my opinion. Now you may disagree. That's what an opinion is. But the truth is fact. The truth doesn't care about our feelings or opinions. It is the foundation. So we wanna look at the facts, the evidence of God. Here's what Winston Churchill, one of the greatest men in history, says about facts. The truth is incontrovertible. Malice may attack it, ignorance may deride it, but in the end, there it is. What he's saying is the truth is right here, and no matter how angry we are at the truth, no matter how much we want to avoid the truth, it still stands. There's a woman named Agatha Christie who wrote a book about uh, a detective, and this is what she says, as, as we are detectives on this investigation, she says, it often seems to me that all detective work is, is wiping off your false starts and beginning again. Yes, it's very true and it's what some people will not do. They conceive a certain theory and everything has to fit into that theory. If one little fact does not fit into their theory, they throw it aside. But it is always the facts that will not fit that are significant. What she's saying is, you know, often we just draw a theory. Here's what I believe to be true. And if we get facts that don't fit into that theory, we throw them out. But those are the most significant facts. So what is the world telling you? The world's telling you that there's no God. God doesn't exist. God isn't real. And here's my question to that. Do you believe that there's such a thing as good and evil? Let, let's take evil, for example. Do you believe that there's such a thing as evil? People say, I don't believe in God. Okay, well, is stealing wrong? If there's something that belongs to you and I steal it, is that evil? What about murder? Is murder wrong? There's people that you love in this world. It, if someone murdered them, would that be evil? Now the answer is obviously, of course it is. We all know that murder is evil. But here's the question, if you don't believe in God, who's to say that evil is a thing? If you don't believe in God, then you probably believe that we're just animals that have evolved over millions of years. And if that's the case, then murder is actually very natural. Have you ever seen an animal documentary? You ever seen a lion chasing after a gazelle? I know for me, when I watch those, those documentaries, I'm always rooting for the gazelle. I'm like, go, go, go baby gazelle. Jump, jump, get out of there. And maybe you've seen a documentary like I have where the gazelle gets away and I'm filled with joy, I'm ecstatic. I'm like, you did it, baby gazelle! You go, baby gazelle! And then the narrator goes back to the lion and says, and now the lion 
and her five cubs face starvation. And I'm like, what? I don't want the baby cubs to die. Gazelle, get back here. I'm in this emotional roller coaster. But here's why I say that. We've all seen those animal documentaries where the lion is chasing after their prey. Well, that's natural. We don't, we don't put the lion in prison because he went after the gazelle. So if we're just animals, if there's no God, if we're just here randomly, we've evolved over time, then who's to say that murder is evil? Murder is the most natural thing in the animal kingdom. It's survival of the fittest. But there's something in everybody that knows it's wrong. Why do you believe it's wrong? I can tell you why I know murder's wrong. I know murder's wrong because it's all throughout scripture. It says in Genesis 127, God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. I believe that murder is wrong because we're made in the image of God. In Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Why is murder wrong? Because God has a future and a hope for you. John 3, 16, God so loved the world. I believe murder is wrong because God loves his creation. But even more plain than that, in Exodus 20, 13, God says you must not murder. So I know it's true because that's what the Bible says, but if you don't believe in God, where are you getting this notion that evil is wrong? Because we all know deep down it is. Where are we getting that from? Well, Romans says it very clear in the book of Romans, uh, chapter 2, verse 14. Listen to what Paul says about the outsiders, people who don't believe in God. When outsiders who have never heard of God's law follow it more or less by instinct, they confirm its truth by their obedience. They show that God's law is not something alien imposed on us from without, but woven into the very fabric of our creation. There is something deep within them that echoes God's yes and no, right and wrong. See, the evidence for God, one of the many evidences for God, is we know deep down there's such a thing as good and evil. And if we were just animals, then we wouldn't know that. We wouldn't believe that. But God has interwoven his DNA in us. We are made in his image. There is a right and wrong because God, who supersedes us, has ordered the world that way. There are so many evidences for God, so many evidences for Jesus. One of my favorite evidences is where we don't have time to talk about all of them. One of my favorites is Israel. Look at the nation of Israel. God chose Israel as his people in the Old Testament. It's throughout scripture and in Deuteronomy 7, 6, he says, for you are a people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for his treasured possession. Psalm 135, for the Lord has chosen Jacob for himself, Israel as his own possession. Deuteronomy 14, 2, for you are a people holy to the Lord your God and the Lord has chosen you. Throughout scripture, God chooses Israel as his nation. Well, here's what's interesting about Israel. Israel is surrounded by countries that hate them. Egypt, Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, countries that want to destroy Israel. And Israel, I don't know if you know this, but Israel has been the most oppressed people group in history. Throughout all of history, people have hated the Jewish people. People have tried to destroy the Jewish people. And here's my question, why? What have they done to deserve that? Well, I think it's because God shows them as their, as, as his nation, and the enemy doesn't like that. Here's another amazing thing that I think proves the evidence of God. Look at the size of Israel in reference to all the countries that surround it. And all of the countries that surround Israel want to destroy Israel. Let me put this in, in perspective for you. Israel is about the size of New Jersey, okay? New Jersey is a very small state out of our 50 states. Let, let, me, let me give you an example of what this is like. Let's say that all 49 states in America all went to war against New Jersey. All 49 of them. Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, California, Colorado, Connecticut, Delaware, Florida, Georgia, Hawaii, Hawaii, Idaho, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan. Minnesota, Mississippi, Missouri, Montana, Nebraska, Nevada. What's after Nevada? New Hampshire, New York, New Mexico. 
North Carolina, North Dakota, Ohio, Oklahoma, Oregon, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, South Carolina, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, Texas, Utah, Vermont, Virginia, Washington, West Virginia, Wisconsin, Wyoming. <gasps> That's a lot of states. Now picture all 49 of those states all going after New Jersey. Whose side would you choose? Who do you think, as a logical person, who do you think would win that war? I don't think anybody in their right mind would say New Jersey versus 49 states, New Jersey's gonna win. But that's what Israel has done for thousands of years. Israel has gotten attacked on all sides by all these nations who are bigger than them. As if 49 states all going against New, Jer New Jersey. And here's what's amazing. Israel is still standing and still victorious. To me, that's an evidence for God protecting his chosen nation. Now, there are many evidences throughout scripture. There's many evidence in history. There's many evidences as we look at it just logically. But I encourage you to go on an investigation yourself. We don't have time to go through every evidence of God. Uh, this video would last 50 hours and we don't have that kind of time and I'm sure you don't too. But continue the investigation on your own. I've been investigating for years and every time I go on an investigation, I come out with the same conclusion, that God exists, that he loves us, and he has a plan for us. And I know that if you go on an investigation and not just follow your feelings, not just follow what your parents have told you, but actually investigate the truth, actually look at the evidence, you will find that God is real, he loves you, and he has a future for you. There's many resources, but just two of them that I really love. This is called Children Demand a Verdict by Josh McDowell. This one's called The Case for Christ by Lee Strobel. This is evidence for God. This is evidence for Jesus that he lived, that he died, that he resurrected from the dead. I encourage you to continue this investigation. We're so thankful to spend this time with you. And I know that if you search for the truth, for the evidence, you're gonna find how real God is and how much he loves you. We love you and we'll see you next week. The journals are full. Yes, yes. Good. That was so good. Well, guys, we have had so much fun, literally, so much fun yep. hanging out with y'all and um, just playing games and, you know, staying safe. Yep, always. People. Yes, always. we want this to be a safe place where you can hang out, have fun, uh, worship, and hear from God ultimately. So we hope that y'all heard something today, and we can't wait to see y'all soon. Yep. Have a great week. Love you. The flip side. Love you. I love you. Find protoplasmic and vertebrate jellies. <laughs>